I'm sorry guys, we're, we're doing what we can. Okay, let's see if uh, if you guys can hear me now. Um, yeah, Tyler, we're still having a problem. Apparently they can't hear still. And they're getting the sound that you're getting, which is very odd. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We may have to reschedule this. I don't I don't know what the deal is. Okay okay, it's working now, apparently. According to Bobby, it is working now. So we're good to go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, um, I am so sorry, you guys, about all of that. Um, I guess you know things things happen with technology, and you just have to <laughs> just have to wing it sometimes. Um, okay, Tyler, can you hear me? Oh, but you're not here. You're not here. Well, I will. <laughs> I will uh, do do an introduction, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, by the time I'm done with our introduction, uh, Tyler will be back. <laughs> um, okay. So um, today, uh, well, okay. I'm going to pause for a second, do an official introduction, so that we can edit out all this mess. I really apologize. Okay. Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Food Master Series. I'm Amelia Carbine, your host, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are all here. I apologize for the, the uh, inconvenience of the, um, of the issues that we've been having, and, uh, and uh, I'm glad that you guys stuck with us. <laughs> so uh, today we have a really awesome guest, um, he is very young, and uh, age aside, he is super, super talented. And uh, I, I actually went out to Austin, Texas for That Takes the Cake, a sugar show and competition. And he uh, had entered a, a few cakes there, and uh, I was in the, the room of the, you know, where, where his entry was. I was just taking pictures of you know the different cakes that were in there, and I you know noticed of course Nicholas Lodge. If you've ever met Nicholas Lodge, he has like a, a bright green chef's coat, so he he can't be missed. <laughs> but uh, I I saw Nicholas Lodge in this room, and he was talking to this young kid, and and I was like, oh, I wonder who this kid is, and and I thought, oh, it's really nice that that. Uh, Chef Lodge would 
would talk to this kid and and uh, help him with you know his his work and critique him and help him figure out what it is that he can do better and uh, so I was really uh, impressed with Chef Lodge and so I I went over to get a closer look of the cake and see you know what they were all talking about and uh, ended up that I saw this cake and I was just blown away with the idea that this kid could have done that cake and um, and so anyway I had to introduce myself I jumped in there and said hey <laughs> um, you are super talented I am really impressed with your work and um, I just had to have him come on on cake foo and share some of his amazing knowledge um, so we have Tyler Gary here with us and he is uh, going to be talking to us about um, about string work which on this cake of his amazing string work super amazing string work and so I was very very impressed by it and so today uh, Tyler Gary is here with us he is actually on now <laughs> so yes I got it <laughs> yay well wow, that was a uh, quite the quite the journey to get to where we are <laughs> Yes, I'm on my iPad again. Okay. All right. Well, as long as you're as long as you're here, it looks like you're not anymore though. <laughs> okay. But anyway, Tyler Gary is going to be uh showing us some string work techniques. He actually has a cake that he's got um partially prepared for us and he'll be walking us through the, the steps of string work. Uh, one thing that I have noticed in, in all of the cake food trainings that I've done, in the feedback that I get from people, I, I get a lot, of, um, a lot of people saying that string work and piping is something that uh, really is something that you guys want to learn more about. And um, so every once in a while, I remember that, and I try and bring in someone to to work on string work. And um, so this is, I, I think, a great opportunity for some of you guys to learn from someone. And yes, he's young, but he really knows his stuff. I I really I, I can't stress enough how amazing his work is. And uh, let's see, he has studied under. He has studied under um, Chef Lodge. He actually did get a chance to go out and um, do some some studying with him, and uh, also Don Parrott. Um, she he has has worked with her. And if you guys know who Don Parrott is, uh, she is she is all about piping. And so I can see where uh, Tyler gets a lot of his skills and talents and. Uh, and yeah, um, Tyler, if you um, just uh, if you guys could pause for just a second, I will. Okay. All right. We've almost we've almost got him back. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Tyler, I I can hear you. Nobody else can. But um, I I have a question for you, real fast, and I'll I'll relay it to everybody. Um, how old are you exactly? Okay. So, wow. Okay. So Tyler is 18 years old. He turned 18 in November. So um, very young and. Uh, I I I think of uh, Sydney Galpern when I when I um, think about Tyler because you know both very young but both very very talented and definitely um, great at instructions great at you know at what they do and so even though they are young they really definitely have uh, the the skills 
And um, Tyler is, is just breaking into the teaching side of things. He is working at lining up his first class. And um, he will be teaching it in Texas. Uh, San Antonio, is that right? Okay. Yes. So San Antonio, San Antonio is where he uh, will be doing his first class. Uh, because, you know, that's, that's where he lives. Yes, I'm we're back. back. Yeah, we're back. Awesome. Yay, okay. <laughs> Hopefully it'll, it'll stay this Hopefully time. Hopefully it'll stay, yeah. Okay. All right. And I can hear you through the, through the speakers now, too. Oh, good, good, good. All right, well, I will take out the cell phone. Uh, earphones. Yes, I'm just and, gonna. Uh, I'm gonna keep you connected on the phone. Yes, I will just too. Keep it down, just in case. Okay, sounds good. All right. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Who? <laughs> it's all official now. <laughs> yes. Yes, we finally got it. We got it to go to work. All right. Well, everybody's excited. Uh, I think to to see you and to get started with the demonstration. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I hope that my introduction of you was, was acceptable. <laughs> oh, yes, it was fine. It was Is fine. there anything that you would like to add to it? Um, no, I think, I think you pretty much uh, got everything that we had talked about and everything. So good. That's okay. good. All right. Well, if you want to just jump into the, the demonstration part, then okay. um, that would be great. All right. So... Um, what I'm going to be demonstrating is uh, is string work. It's kind of my thing. So, um, but before I start, I kind of wanted to go over um, a couple things. First, um, there's really three things that um, three things that I like to tell people about how to accomplish doing string work. That's um, patience. Um, the royal icing and a steady hand. So what I was going to talk about the royal icing first. The royal icing, um, it's really important to have good royal icing because when you're dealing with super fine tips like that, it's really easy for stuff to get clogged in there and then you're just, you know, just getting frustrated the whole time. So um, what I do is um, I sift um, I, I sift my powdered sugar three times for one and then I'll um, I actually have started to strain my egg white and that's to get the um, those little white um, stringy things inside the white and mm -hmm. those can clog up inside the tip too so I get those out and also um, for one egg white it's about eight ounces of powdered sugar and then I'll add a fourth a teaspoon of glucose and a fourth a teaspoon of gum arabic and I actually got that from Don Parrott and that will help with strength and flexibility um, during your piping because that's important when you're dealing with string work. Um, as far as storing um, I just use an air airtight container like this and I put a um, this saran wrap push down on top of the royal icing to get you know as much air as I can away from the royal icing to keep it to keep it a nice consistency. Great. Um, Tyler, would would you be okay if we uh, shared that recipe? Uh, sure. Okay. We will. Um, for those exactly. of you that are that are listening, um, maybe if that's okay, we can um, post it on our Cake Foo uh, blog. Yeah. And, and have it there for you guys. Okay. You, uh, you were going to say it's actually what? Um, I was just going to say that it's it's really Don's recipe that I use. <laughs> um, I guess okay. I just added the sifted powdered sugar and the strained egg white, but um, I just wanted to say that. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. I think I think that's all I was going to say about oh with the royal icing also. Um, before you put it in your tip, you're going to want to put it through pantyhose, and that will also clean out any um, imperfections or anything like that. 
also um, the last step before putting it in would be using a palette knife like this here and um, spreading it out on a table or a, a counter or something like that and getting all the air bubbles out um, because you want a really smooth you know smooth wear icing because the worst thing that, that can happen is you know you're just doing your little string and you're all concentrated then puff of air comes out and then the string breaks ah. so so it's those air bubbles are not our little, friend. <laughs> no, air bubbles are not our friend. Um, now let's see. I think that's it on the royal icing. The the bag I'm going to be using is um, this is just a clear plastic um, piping bag. A lot of people like to use parchment paper, and um, I you know I I've used parchment paper b before. But I think I really like just the plastic bags. I mean, they're easy and they work for me. Okay. So do you that's just what cut I it use. off? Is that? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm um, I think I get the smallest, the smallest size plastic bag they make, and then I'll just, I'll just cut it to about, you know, four, four or five inches or so. Okay. Because you don't want a lot when you're doing all this fine stuff. Mhm. Mm um, let's see. You know what, there, the there are some people that keep asking for this recipe again. Could you say it one more time? And for those of you that yeah. do miss it, don't have a chance to write it down, we will put it on the blog. But for those of you that, that want it again, okay. What it's, what it's going to be is one, just uh, strained egg white. So just put it through a strainer or a, something just to get all, those, all the... Uh, Jeez, I can't think of the name what it is, but all the little stringy white things. Yeah, like Albumen or something like that. Is that what it is? The, uh, I don't know. The little connected tissues. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That stuff. Um, you want to get that out of it. So one strained egg white, and then I would get um, get your regular 10x powdered sugar and sift that three more times. Okay. Um, just to get that powdered sugar really fine and all the little little messed up parts about it out of there and then it's going to be um, and that's about six to eight ounces or six to ten ounces of powdered sugar just depending on where you live and then um, it's going to be a fourth a teaspoon of glucose and a fourth a teaspoon of gum, gum arabic okay thank you mm -hmm. yeah and then we'll put that on in a little bit um, Let's see, the tip, the tip, um, this tip that I'm using is just a zero, and a zero is a great, is a great place to start with string work. Um, I'm now using a number, or a double zero tip, because it's just a little bit finer, and um, I like the way it looks, but a zero is a great place to start, especially if you're, you know, if you've never done it before, it's good to start here. Um, so that's what I'm going to be demonstrating with, and this is the double zero. You can't really, really see it because they're too small. But is there a the specific brand there. that you use? The brand that I use is PME. Mm -hmm. um, I like it because it's seamless, you know. And there's, I don't get get it where the icing curls on me or anything. Mm -hmm. So I use PME for all my string work and whatnot. Good. Um, that's a that's a brand I use too. <laughs> yes, it's a good brand. Um, Okay, so I was going to mention this. Um, if for some reason your um, your icing does clog, um, you don't want to get get something that you're going to put pressure on the end of the tip and uh, mess up the tip. Because if you mess up the the end of the tip, it's gonna it's gonna start curling. And it's gonna be a big mess for you. Mm -hmm. So what I what I use is a um, just a 30 gauge floral wire. And it's actually smaller than the tip, so it doesn't, it shouldn't hit, hit the tip of the tip and mess it up. So I would just um, either take off the little green, green stuff on it, or just get a naked uh, floral wire, and just very carefully just uh, clean out the end of your tip until the icing comes back out. Good. Yeah, you don't want to be jamming and scraping and scratching. No. Yeah. Yes, I've. T I learned that the hard way. I was in the middle of uh, my show cake for Oklahoma. It was the first time I used the double zero, and I 
was getting frustrated, just dug a little needle in there, and yeah, oh. it did not. Ah. It just made it. It just made it worse. But you know, I got I got through with it. But yeah, so don't do that. Use a um, a wire that's smaller than the hole at the tip. Okay. Um. I guess what I can actually before I do that. So there's there's lots of different types of string work. What I'm going to be doing is Australian string work, which is the bridgeless extension work. And you, what you do with that is you get these pins and put them in the on the cake, in the cake and you uh, put drop strings around them. So it's kind of like when, once it all dries, it's kind of away from the cake. It looks like it's floating in the air. Um, there's also just regular bridge work, which is just drop string on top of drop string to make the bridge for um, the extension work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a couple um, different ways, like for the, for the bridge work, or really for any of the extension work, you're going to want to use this, um, a template like this. It's just receipt paper. And what I do is just put it around the cake. I got a little dummy here, Michelle. But you're just going to put it around the cake like so until it meets a – this one's a little short, but until it meets around, and that will get your size. So you don't have to, you don't have to worry about doing pi times r squared and all that stuff. So um, once you get the size of it, you're just going to fold it however many times you want. That way you get um, even spaces around your whole cake. Perfect. And you can find this receipt paper at you know, like an office supply oh, store? Oh, yeah, you can go. Yeah, you can, it's just regular receipt. Uh, you can get it at Office Depot or um, even Walmart probably has it. So, yeah, wherever you can find it, just any, anything, any kind of receipt paper is fine. Perfect. Um, so that's what I use to mark out my spaces. That way it's even across the whole thing. Um, and also for bridge work, you can actually use this to make your bridge. What you can do is just uh, you just divide it up, and then you can get like a cutter or something and uh, make it to where it's like an arch there. And you can lay it down on the bottom of your cake and you can actually get like an exacto knife or something and sketch sketch it out on the onto the cake. Onto the cake. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess we will go. I'll go ahead and start demonstrating here. Let me just kind of readjust everything real quick. All right, and we did have a question again. Um, someone was asking uh, where you got your training. They they missed that. So. Can you tell who, who you studied under again? Sure. Um, well, probably my original training um, and mentoring came from Jake Walls. And uh, he was featured on uh, Next Great Baker mm -hmm. the first season. Um, but he was probably my f what I would call my first, my first teacher, I guess you would say. Um, and he's also a piper too. So, um, but I, after Jay, it was um, Nicholas Lodge in Chicago. I took a um, I took a week long class in Chicago with him, and we made a little Valentine's cake. And then Don Parrott recently, I I met her at a I met her at Isis this past year. Um, and here, let me turn this back real quick. I met I met her at Ice at Isis, and she's kind of kind of been a mentor recently. Um, the Austin Cake Show, she helped me out a lot. That's where she gave me her recipe, um, uh, her recipe, and I use that for my show cake. And she she also helped me throughout that whole process of doing um, my show cakes for the Austin Show this year. Um, so I guess those are are the three kind of people, I would say, um, mm -hmm. that have kind of been a mentor or whatnot. Um, also, I just wanted to say this. My actual, like, passion for string work actually came from 
I don't have the book over here, but Tova Garrett's um, The Well-Decorated Cake Book, that's actually the first place that I saw um, string work. So that's really what... Um, where, really where I got interested in string work. So after Definitely. I saw that book and was reading and was reading what um, was in it, I just decided to try it and you know that's where, really where I found found a passion for it. Awesome. So yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, let me turn this back around here. All right. I don't know how. There's a there's a pretty harsh light on just the front of that cake, and it's almost whiting it out. Is there a way that you can move the light or or move the cake a little bit? Let's see. Does that help? Here, hold on. I know what it is. That's that perfect. Yes, much better. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, so this is actually a demo cake that I was um, that I used in in the Austin show. But what it is is uh, this is just Australian string work, and you can see it here with the pins. I don't know if you can see the pins in it. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's there's pins in here, and that's what that's how you start with Australian string work. Um, so what I usually do for Australian or bridgeless is I'll put my pins in, do my drop strings like this here um, for the bridge or the part where the extensions are going to be held to. Um, I'll do that and go around the cake and pipe two or three lines on each point and then in the middle. And um, after I do that around the whole cake, then usually or you, yeah, usually it'll um, it'll be sturdy enough to where I can take the pins out. So, like right here, you see. I mean, obviously I didn't finish it. So I just piped a couple strings, and then I went ahead and take the pins out, took the pins out, because I find it easier to do the strings without the pins because they kind of get in the way sometimes. Oh, okay. So um, that's what I did here. I just put these in here to uh, kind of show what it looks like at the beginning. Okay. Um, so what I guess I'll go ahead and s s um, I'll just do one of these sections here. Now with um, with extension work, you, you're not going to want to just keep piping over and over again on the same spot until you finish that section. What I like to do is pipe that one spot on each section and just go around the whole cake. That that way the um, your strings will, you know, stay more straight and even because sometimes they'll kind of get crooked when you're just focusing on one area. I like, mm -hmm. to, so that's why I just like to, you know, pipe one string, go to the next section, pipe that same string, but on the next section and just keep doing that all the way around. And that awesome. just keeps an even and consi consistent look. Yeah, that's a really um, good tip. Yeah. So for, I guess I'll, what I'll do is just go ahead and start here. Now what I do on the um, extensions is I call it setting a foundation and that's really just the the very the point right here and what that's going to do is basically hold the rest of the line so it won't break till you get to the to the other end. So let me just do this here. So I went ahead and did that one, and you and uh, what I like to do is go a little bit past, a little bit past the the line here, and you can just get um, a wet paintbrush. And you can kind of just clean up the edge there, and you can kind of move it around if it's crooked or whatnot. Well, that's good. So now I'm going to go to the middle here and do this section. 
And you know, um, I forgot to mention this, but this is a tilting turntable. So um, when you're doing your extensions, you want to have it on a slight tilt. That way your um, your lines won't look droopy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's dropping straight down instead of, you know, kind of curving. Mm -hmm. exactly. Instead of having to pull it out. Okay. Yes, yes. Good. Um, next one here. And the same thing again with the paintbrush. You can just, um, you know, I just kind of eyeball it when it looks even to me. You can move the string to the right or to the left or even tighten it a little bit by just pushing down a little bit. Okay. I usually will uh, talk people through when they're doing demonstrations, but I feel like I have to be quiet. <laughs> this is such a concentrated... No, no, no. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're fine. <laughs> okay, here's a question for you. How long does the bridge need um, to be dry? How how long does it need to dry before you can start doing um, your drop strings? Um, or your strings. I, I usually like to, um, I usually like to let it dry overnight. Um, before I start piping any extensions on it, but um, you know, if you're kind of in a rush, you can. It'll they'll be okay in about four or five hours. Okay, perfect. Um, and I just lost you. Hang on. I don't know if you can hear me, Tyler, but I just lost you again. Um. Okay, <laughs> he's coming back. So yeah, no worries. Um. Okay, so for those of you that are um. Uh, still here, and uh, hopefully you guys didn't drop off, just him. Um, there was a question, how how did you do the cone? Um, he did explain that at the beginning. Uh, basically, he took uh, just, just your plastic disposable uh, piping bags. He took the smallest of the, the disposable piping bags that he could find and then cut off the end of it so it doesn't have all that extra length to it. And he said it's about four inches. Um, from you know from the tip of the bag to the end of the bag and that way it gets you know so it, to it, it makes it small enough so that you can hold on to it and not have to um, you know mess with things and and it, it's easier to hold it this way and do your string work than it is to hold you know like your typical piping bag of doing it this way so um, so yeah that's what he does uh, I would think that for the, the end of the piping bag, I wish I had a piping bag here with me, but I'm guessing that he would take the, the corner of the piping bag, fold one side down, fold another side down, and then fold the, that main part down. Um, I, that's the, the typical way to, to close up uh, a parchment bag. And so I'm guessing that that's the way that he does with his, his plastic bags as well. Um, yeah, um, hopefully that explains it to you guys. And uh, again, he uses a tip zero for this one. He started using tip double zero. Um, we can just go over a little bit some of the things that um, that he talked about. Um, he said that how long, Tyler? Can you or should the bridge dry? Four to five hours. Okay, four to five hours, but it's best if you let it sit overnight. Um, let's ask um, Tyler again if you're going to be doing the the built up um, bridge, not the bridgeless. Um, how do you do? You need to wait between each layer uh, of the build up or Okay, so what he said was that um, with 
with each row that you do to for the for the bridge string work. So um, basically, that's taking a, a row of um, of your royal icing, and then you would come back and do another row, and then do another row, and and build it out as far as you want it to be, and then you do your string work from there. And so what he said is, you want to wait about two hours. Is that what you said? Two to three hours, yeah. About two to three hours between each row that you do uh, so that it has a chance to really, you know, set up. And so it does take a little bit more time to do the bridge string work. Um, but I'm guessing it's a little more sturdy in the end. Uh, and I guess it's just what, what you're going for, what effect you're going for. So, all right. Uh, we're still not back yet. Hopefully we'll be back soon. Um, mm. We have, if we have any questions, does anyone have any questions that we could answer? No, I have to wait for Bobby to type them to me. Okay. Oh, for those of you that are. Um, that are listening, uh, I'm pretty sure next week we are going to be doing um, kind of a really fun training. It's going to be, I we haven't gotten it completely squared away yet, but uh, Liz Merrick and I are both going to do a team, uh, I guess a, a team teaching, a, a double demo kind of a thing, and it is to celebrate the fact that both of us are um, reaching our 2,000 uh, Facebook likes, and so um, so make sure you come and join us. We're going to be doing several giveaways, which will be really fun, and both of us will be demonstrating. So it should be really a fun a fun training and something for for all of you guys. So and yeah, we'll have something for everybody. It should be really really fun. Okay, so um, Benita says. Uh, a question for you, Tyler. Do you prefer gel colors or dust to color the royal icing? Okay. Okay. Um, he said that he uses gel colors. That's all he's ever used. He hasn't really tried the, the powdered colors. Um, but he has heard that they work just fine. So I... I imagine that you know that it would work either way, and the gel color clearly works because I I have seen that uh, in fact the cake that Tyler did in Austin had black string work, and so did you use uh, Tyler? Did you use uh, the black gel color to color that? Yeah. So he used. Did you use any like cocoa or anything like that, or just straight gel color? Okay. Okay, okay. So gel color, and he was able to get a really dark black color, and did black string work with that. So clearly, it works to use gel colors. <laughs> so looks like we were we're getting you back. Yay! <laughs> yes. Hold on, real quick. Okay. Um, and then also another question is: Are your cakes? Or is that cake that you're working on? Is that uh, covered with fondant? Yes. This is a, um, a fondant covered uh, cake dummy. Um, most of my cakes are fondant. I just like I like the way they look. Um, okay. um, I do do some buttercream cakes or royal icing cakes, like the cake we did in in uh, Chicago that I when I went uh, went to Chicago for Nicholas Lodge's class. We did a royal icing cake there. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, this one that I was demonstrating is just a fondant, a fondant cake. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, um, I, I needed to make a correction. Liz and I are both reaching our 20,000 likes, not 2,000. Did I say 2,000? Okay, 20,000 likes. Um, so we're gonna, it's going to be like the, we're going to call it the 20K giveaway. So it should be fun. <laughs> All right. All right, so let me just show you a couple more things here. Um, 
so yeah, what you're going to do is I just kind of uh, did a little demonstration here of a full section here. Um, you know, obviously I wouldn't do this normally. I would just do it all the way around till all of them were done together. Mm -hmm. But um, this is kind of what it looks like when it's all done. I don't know if you can if you can kind of see it all done or not there. But um, that's what it looks like. And I was also going to demonstrate how to take out the pins because with us, with um, this bridgeless extension work, it's kind of nerve-wracking dealing with the pins and, um, you know, like you're kind of pulling them out and you accidentally let go and, like, bounces back and hits your strings or something. That's no good. So yeah. I was just going to kind of um, demonstrate uh, one of these here. So what I like to do is um, go around and just – Barely give each pin a twist, and when you twist it, that kind of breaks it off from the royal icing. Um, and then after you twist it, and it's uh, no longer really connected to the to your string work, I like to push down just a little bit and slowly pull out until it comes out. So again, it's Perfect. just a twist, and then push down just a little bit. And slowly pull out. Have you ever broken it pulling out the the pins? Um, you know, I don't think I ever actually have. Oh, Maybe I have once. <laughs> there's been yes. There's a lot of times that it's almost broken, and I've my heart has start started beating really fast. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but yes, I don't think it's actually ever broken a string. Thank goodness. Um, it, you know, string work is surprisingly strong when you do it right. Yes, it is very strong. Um, you know, I've never had any of my string work break on a delivery or anything like that before. Um, you know, it's it it. Oh, my bad. It is. <laughs> it good. is. Um, it is very delicate if you touch it. But as far as um, you know, it just hang up. You know, hanging, hanging around for the ride, it's it's always done fine for me. Perfect, perfect. That's really cool. That's good to know. I, you know, I actually have done some string work, um, mostly oh, yeah. more of the Australian, you know, the yeah, yeah drop string. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I've I've done that. I have not done very much of the, you know, the the bridge string work and the the bridge, you know, string work that you do. I need to. I need to do it. I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yes, um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, the string work that I have done, it it really is strong. It really is strong. So, mm -hmm. um, surprise. And this recipe, this recipe also will make it even more strong. Just with that, the glucose and the gum arabic, it really helps. Okay. Any tips for delivery? People are asking how how do you deliver a cake like this? Um. Usually I would take the pins out before, um, you know, they're, well, they, if you do it where you take the pins out before you finish, they'll be out anyways. But if you're too nervous and um, you end up leaving the pins in throughout the whole extension work process, um, I would go ahead and take the pins out before you get there because, um, you know, if you take them out at home, you have a chance to fix anything that might have gone wrong. You know, if you're taking them out at the, at the uh, venue or something, then you know it's a lot harder to fix something there. Um, that's that's very interesting because I think that a lot of people would think leave it in, it'll keep it stronger. Yeah. No, know, but no. I would take it out. Um, my Oklahoma show cake, I drove eight hours or whatever it was without the pins in it, um, and it did fine. So you know, it's kind of nerve wracking, but it's actually it will be okay. I promise. Good, um, very good. Um, one thing that I um, that I would recommend doing, if I can jump in here and add my yeah, little yeah. bit, uh, secure the the actual cake into place. You know, you have your non-skid stuff. I would definitely put that down. But then also these pins that you put in for the string work, um, get a, a bigger piece of um, uh, like a, sh a really short styrofoam, like one inch, and set the the cake down on that and pin the the cake actually the you know the cake board 
around um, with those pins, and that will keep mm -hmm. it from from moving and sliding at all. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a, I, in my opinion, the safest way to to transport something. That I mean, if it slides at all, I mean, if it bumps anything, you're gonna have some issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, someone's asking, do you spray the pins and then wipe them off before using, or does the royal icing just not stick? Um, I I have used uh, wiped some Crisco on it before, um, and it works fine. Um, you know, I don't really. I, I just I don't really mess with it, and it always seems to do okay for me. But you know, like I said, if you're nervous or something, then you can go ahead and um, spray it and wipe it down just to get give it that you know non-stick feel to it. Very good. Okay, that's a that's a good good thing to know. So if you want to spray it and you want to wipe it, that's fine. If not, don't worry too much. It should just should just come with. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yes. Um. Let's yes. see. Let's talk a little bit um, again about uh, the, the upcoming class that you have. You don't have all the details ready yet, but you want to um, kind of talk about uh, about the timeline, where people can go to find out more about your classes, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've never done a class before, so this will be my first one. And um, I think, uh, or I don't think, I do know what it's going to be about. It's going to be um, just on different variations of stream work. And I'll probably go over basic drop strings to, you know, bridgeless extension work, maybe maybe some oriental string work in there, too. Awesome. Very cool. That'll, that'll be a really good class. Um, I'm hoping to get the classes, I'm hope, yeah, I'm hoping to get them ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it. Hopefully it'll be um, ready by August or, you know, the end of summer sometime. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, and I'll start around Texas doing some Texas classes. And, you know, the main goal is to start doing it around the country, though. Okay. And for so those of you that out. that want to um, keep in touch with Tyler and, and possibly take that class, um, you can find him on his Facebook page. He will be updating his class information, things like that. It's uh, Tyler Gary Cakes. Is that right? It's Cake. No, it's okay. okay, Tyler Gary Cake on, on Facebook. So you can go mm -hmm. and look him up there on Facebook, Tyler Gary Cake. And uh, everybody go on there, like him, show, show the love, because uh, <laughs> he, he, needs, he needs more likes, I think, because I was, I was on his page, and, and he, he's way too good to, to have the, <laughs> the number of likes he has. He needs more. <laughs> so everyone go over and, and like his Facebook page, and yeah. Yeah, and that page is, um, I'll put, I'll post more info about my upcoming classes, and also, um, that's also where I just put the cakes that I do on the side for friends, family, or really whoever. So that's really what goes on on that page. So it's kind of a fun page. Awesome. Okay, we have someone asking a question. I think that they're asking about if you do this on a buttercream cake. Um, I don't know if you ever have, but here's the question, and you can you can uh, translate it however you. <laughs> it says, right. "Have you ever had any problem?" With the strings breaking with buttercream, like breaking because of buttercream. Um. The okay, so the question is, using, like doing string work on a buttercream cake. Is that what the question is? I I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Maybe Linda can can specify what her um, her question is. Well. I'll try to answer it the best I can. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't do string work on a buttercream cake just because the buttercream is not really sturdy enough to hold the royal icing. And if the buttercream starts to melt, then the royal icing will just kind of melt with end, it. End up, yeah. yeah, melt with it and probably break and stuff. Okay. So I would only do, um, you know, string work like this either on a fondant or a royal icing cake. Something okay. that's not going to droop or something with heat or. Would you ever try something like this with buttercream? Um, 
like doing string work with buttercream? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Um, it's just not strong enough. And also, um, royal icing dries really like almost rock hard. And buttercream does not, you know, it'll always be somewhat soft. Mm -hmm. So it really, extension work and that kind of stuff really won't, um, won't work with buttercream. But, I mean, you can do like your regular basic drop strings. Drop strings. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, borders like that. I've done that before. I've just never, um, you know... I've never done extension work because it really just wouldn't work. <laughs> good, good. Okay, um, I think that that's all the questions that we can take for now. I know that we started late, so we, we went over yeah. a little bit. Um, yes. I, I'm very glad that you guys stuck with us. Thank you for staying with us. And uh, um, I guess, you know, sometimes technology just does things like this. and It yeah. does what it wants. Yeah. It's whatever. <laughs> So hopefully that uh, that bug will be worked out for next time and and uh, yeah thank you so much Tyler for coming and oh no and thank you this. thank you for having me I think that uh, I I don't know about anybody else out there but I'm gonna go home and try some string work again because I I you know, it's fun it really is once you get I I guess I'm the type of personality that I can concentrate on something for a long amount of time and yeah and. And I like to see, you know, the very detailed. I'm a very detailed person, mm -hmm. so I can totally see this being something that that I can yeah. that I can run there's, with. And, go ahead. There's people that, um, you know, there's people that like it and people that don't like it. Um, I find it very soothing to do. It kind of relaxes me. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's other people like that, but some people they're just like, ugh, string work. Ugh, don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, so I guess it just kind of depends on your personality and whatnot, but, you know, I find it really soothing. Um, it's by far my favorite, my favorite thing to do. Awesome. Well, that's good. That's good, because we need a lot of string work out there. <laughs> yes, yes. And you are very, very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank if, you. If you guys want to, do you, you have pictures of your cakes up on, um, on your page, right? Your mm -hmm. Tyler Perry yeah, cake? Yeah, all my cakes, all my cakes are on there, so... You can just go to yeah. the photos and scroll through them and go check tell out. What you think. Yeah, go check out his his string work. It is, I mean, it's very uniform, very perfect. I, I really, I really was impressed. And I mean, if I wasn't, he wouldn't be here <laughs> because yeah. you know. He, but he really is. He's really that good. So I definitely um, encourage you guys to go check out his uh, Facebook page, Tyler Gary Cake. Um, keep an eye out for his classes. And uh, definitely keep watching Tyler because he is he's a force. So we're excited. We're excited to know you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank well, you. Thank you so much, Tyler, and thank you everyone for for watching and sticking with us. And uh, we'll see you all see you all next time. Okay. Bye.